Sunday morning brings the dawn in. It's just a restless feeling by my side. Hey, it's Nate, and today I am doing Sunday Morning by the Velvet Underground. This song is so vibey. I love playing and singing it, and it's really easy. The only tricky part is the toy piano part, which I'm gonna do for the intro, but that's optional. Let's jump in. All right, so first off, I recommend you get the chords and lyrics chart. There's a link down in the description, and that's gonna help you follow along and see where the chords and the lyrics line up with each other. I'll talk about the intro with the toy piano at the end. Let's just jump into the first verse. Sunday morning brings the dawn in. So this song is a lot of going back and forth between an F major and a B flat major. Here is middle C, so you can get the octave. Um, but for that F major chord, I'm gonna voice like that. A, C, E in the right hand, and I am doing an F bass note down here, a couple octaves lower. Now I'm using the second finger here um, because that keeps me in position to do some of the lower notes we do in the second line. If this ends up feeling like too weird a fingering for you, you can totally do it like that and then just move your hand, so up to you. But for the B flat chord, it's a really convenient transition. We can keep our pinky on that F. And we've got B flat, D, and F coming up with my first finger on the B flat. So one, two, five, and one, three, five for the fingerings for each of those chords. And we're in four, four times, so each of these measures gets four counts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three and so on. But right off the bat, let's add a little bit more rhythm in the right hand. I'm just gonna play quarter notes, just hitting every count. One, two, three, four. So it would be. Sunday morning brings the dawn in. Okay, so for the next line, we've got F. Now here's the first time we've got two chords in the same measure. So we're just dividing the measure in half, two counts for each, or two of those right-hand quarter notes for each. So F, two, then A minor over E, four. It's a really convenient transition here. In the right hand, you can keep your first and second finger on the A and C, and then just step the top note down to an E. I like using the fourth finger there. All the while, we're also stepping the left hand down to an E bass note. So one, two, three, four, then we've got this D minor. So the left hand keeps stepping down, fourth finger on D, and then we're kind of expanding our right hand back out again to be A, D, and F. So it's an inversion on a D minor triad. One, two, so three, full measure of D minor. Then up to G7. Once again, it's a really smooth transition here where the top two notes stay the same. Coming up to my first finger on G, and so G, B, D, and F. Now, if you don't like doing those four notes uh, stacked up for the seventh chords, if that's a little tricky, you can totally either do the top three notes or the bottom three notes. Top three notes has that more aggressive dominant seven sound. Just the G triad sounds a little more mellow. The seventh isn't super pronounced on the recording, so you might like just that simple G triad. And then uh, finally, we've got this C. Um, we're doing an inversion on the C, G, C, and E, coming all the way down two octaves below middle C for that bass note. So let me just do a slow sing through of that whole verse. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more rhythm in the left hand, it's optional, but thinking in eighth notes, so dividing the beat in half, not just thinking one, two, three, four, but one and two and three three and four and I'm going to hit on count one. I'm also gonna hit on the and after two and the and after four. So if we just loop that on the F, it would sound like one, two and three, four and one, two and three. You can also think of it as together, right, left, right, right, left, together, right, left, right, right, left. One, two, three, four. Sunday morning brings the dawn in. It's just 
just a restless feeling by my side. Cool. And then that just repeats a second time with different lyrics on the early dawning. Last thing I want to mention here is I am using the sustain pedal. It smooths everything out. You just got to do a little lift every time the chord changes. So if you need help with that, I made a video all about the pedal lift timing. All right. So after that verse, we've got a chorus. Here are the chords for that. Um, we're just going to keep doing the same playing pattern. The chords are a little different, but the pacing and feel is basically the same. Um, we start on that F. So first line of the chorus is the same. The vocal melody is different. We've got Watch out, the world's behind you. There's always someone around you who will call. Okay, so we've got this G minor here. Um, I like just doing one, two, three there coming off of the uh, B flat chord. Um, and I am also just moving my thumb at that change, but it's G, B flat, and D. Call two, three, four, one, two. So this is the first time we've had two measures in a row of the same chord. It's nothing at all. There's that chord that steps outside the key a little bit. Love it. It's an E flat major. All that needs to happen in the right hand is the top note needs to go up to an E flat. So I'm gonna use my fourth finger there and then come down to my third finger in the left on that E flat bass note. Nothing at all, two, three, four, and then to that C. Uh, same C we did at the end of the verse. One more time, whole thing slowly. One, two, three, four. Watch out. There's always someone around you who will call. There's nothing at all. Sunday morning. Okay, so then we're in the second verse. Nothing new to learn there. It's just uh, two passes through the whole verse progression again with different lyrics. Then we've got another chorus. Then we've got the instrumental section that's sort of like a guitar solo bit. Um, here's the chords for that. Well, it's just another verse. Um, if you have a guitar player, this would be a good time for them to maybe improvise something. But if it's just you and the piano, you could totally add a little bit of Maybe some arpeggios. Two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. You can kind of improvise it there. And then for the walk down part, I might do something like one, two, and three, four, and one. So like one bottom top two notes, three bottom notes top notes um, but you can do anything you like and if you're interested in more ways to sort of improvise and add arpeggios and different rhythms just naturally when you're playing you might want to check out my course piano chord breakthroughs there I go into a ton of different common useful playing patterns to get in your muscle memory so you can find some more freedom in your chord playing after the instrumental section we have got another chorus just like the other choruses and then we have the outro which looks like this it is just back and forth Sunday morning Sunday morning and on the Velvet Underground recording it just repeats and fades um, hard to do when it's just you and piano so I'll probably take it around four times and then maybe end Sunday morning two three four one sounds nice and final if you just end on that F and hold it out. If you wanted to sound a little less resolved, you could do Sunday morning and leave them hanging like that. But that is the end of the song. But we did skip the intro, so let's look at that now. Here's the underlying chords to the intro, just the F to the B flat does that twice. Um, you could, if you're not gonna do the full toy piano part, you might still wanna go up kinda high with it and could do something like this. But I'll be playing the full toy piano part, and it sounds like this.
Here's all the notes and counts for that. We've got the count in the middle, counting in eighth notes. We're going to need those spaces between the main counts. Um, right hand notes are up top, left hand notes are on the bottom. Let's look at the left hand first. So we are just playing on the actual counts. We're not sneaking in on any of the eighth notes for the left hand. And we're going to start on this F. This is the F above middle C. So overall, we're playing really high here. Um, and we've got F, C. Now this F is the higher octave F and then back to that treble C. And of course that's one, two, three, four in terms of the count. I like five, two, one, two for the fingers. And now for the B flat chord, I'm gonna move our hand up here. And this time we're not gonna do the high octave. We're just gonna go back and forth. B flat, F, B flat, F. So the whole pattern is gonna be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then it repeats. So for the right hand notes, we have A, C, A. So big leap up the octave there. You can kind of pivot with your wrist. You don't have to make that stretch. You can let go of that first A and come up there. So one, two, five, and then we have F, C, F. So A, C, A, F, C, F. You could just keep your fingers where they were on the way up, but I like kind of moving my hand along the way and doing the more comfortable fingers for that. The counting is a little tricky here. It starts on the and after one. So the right hand doesn't play on count one. We got one and two and three. So nothing on count three. Again, one and two and three and four and. Now, conveniently, it's the same rhythm for the next measure, one and two and three and four and again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so it's a little tricky to get the hands together there's some interplay sometimes they connect sometimes they don't you can just look at the chart vertically and see if they are playing together or separately um, but it's going to connect like this F on one, then A on the end, so one and two. So notice they connect there, they're both playing C's. One and two and three. So the left hand plays on that three. One and two and three and four and. So again, they just connect on the C's there. They actually, I didn't realize this, the only place they connect here is on the C's, which only happens twice. One and two and three and four and. Okay, take all the time you need with that. Um, and then once you have that rhythm, it's, it's easier to get this one because it's the same thing again. One and two and three and four and so once again they only connect twice this time it's on an f and a d each time one and two and three and four and one and two and three If you find this just a little too tricky, there are two ways you can make it a little easier in terms of the stretching. You could do the same pattern on the F you did on the B flat where you don't go up the octave and you just go back and forth. The other thing is to avoid this awkward jump up to the A from your second finger. You could use only the notes from this inverted F chord that we sort of end up at. And so instead of, you could just do, so it would be, Still sounds really good. So take your pick there, and of course, nothing wrong with just doing chords for the intro. But that's everything. All right, thank you for sticking with me. I am now going to do a full run through so you can see how all these parts we've talked about fit together. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click the bell so you know when I put out more videos just like this one. Okay, here's my version of Sunday Morning. It's just
just a restless feeling by my side early dawning Sunday morning it's just the wasted Watch out, the world's behind you There's always someone around you who will call It's nothing at all so Sun